Hello lovely people. Okay, we're gonna make the best gravy in the world. Oh yes, it's gonna be a beautiful thing. Okay, so whether you're cooking beef, roast beef, roast pork, roast turkey at Christmas, goose, chicken, ducks, game birds, it doesn't matter what you're cooking. I'm gonna give you principles that will serve you and your family really, really well and give you the most extraordinary gravy every single time. Before I started roasting off this beautiful turkey right here, um, I just had an empty tray. Just cut up some onions, leave the skin on, that's fine. Don't bother peeling the carrots, just wash them, hack them up, chunky. The giblets often come with any poultry. Get it in there, it's the key to incredible flavor. So I've got some rosemary, that's job done. Now the purpose of that is to lift the bird or the meat off the bottom of the roasting tray uh, and to absorb all the flavors that cook, the sticky goodness that cooks out of it, we need a little jam jar. We need to separate off the fat. So fat always floats to the surface. Look, if I get a little bit of juice in here, you can see the difference, yeah? And this fat will keep in your fridge for months and months and months. You can put herbs in there if you want. It's a blessing in disguise, don't waste that. So once you've got the fat out, just put it on a high heat and bring it to the boil, okay? You wanna just reduce down the juices. When you're roasting lovely cuts of meat, uh, it's good to have a high-sided, snug-fitting tray, okay? If it's just really thin and massive, everything's gonna kind of scald. You can see, because it's a bit snugger and a bit higher, see all the juice we've got? We've got amazing juice and flavor. Now, your tray might look a little drier than this, and that's fine as well, because you'll probably have sticky bits of goodness on the bottom. I've tried to break it down to three principal levels to get you from here to incredible gravy. Do we thicken it? Do we want to thicken it? We've got corn flour, which you can use, or just normal plain flour. Your choice, it's all good. But then there's a couple of kickers, guys. We've got jam here. Jam, a little thimble, a couple of teaspoons of jam, helps to add incredible sort of silk and sweetness and tang. And the thing to rift off of that sweetness is acid. So see here, acid comes in lots of different forms, vinegar, uh, Worcestershire sauce, balsamic vinegar, beer. So first up, acid. What are we thinking? Roast turkey, I'm thinking Christmas, um, oh, maybe roast pork is the best thing to do. You know, 100 mils, just like half a wine glass, not a lot. Use this liquid to scrape all the goodness off the side. We're using alcohol. You cook that away. It's Christmas, it's turkey, a couple of teaspoons of quince, goes in. So this is exciting, guys. This is really exciting. Certainly in Britain, we love to thicken a gravy. We want a bit more body there, okay? You know, for a turkey, for a tray this size, I'm gonna go in with three teaspoons plain flour. I don't want any lumps, just move it and let the flour soak up all that flavor. It smells incredible. That's nice and thick now. I'm adding stock here, guys. You could add water because there's so much flavor from the turkey. Uh, and the giblets. I'm gonna really almost overfill this tray. And that's why it's really nice to have a nice high-sided roasting tray. Basically, the longer you leave it to reduce and go thick and dark, it will go 10 times more tasty. So I'm gonna let this simmer now for about half an hour, then we'll come and have a look. You can see it's really watery and kind of fairly ugly now. In half an hour, that's gonna be a different story. Beautiful. That is about 20, 25 minutes, and you can see it looks dark, rich, it's thickened up beautifully, so now we need to pass it. When you've got the gravy to the texture that you want, just simply pour it in, and that colander's gonna catch all the larger parts, and if you've got lots of sediment around the side, you can put some water in and scratch it away and pour it back on the top there. Give it a little agitation. You can put a bit of pressure in there. If you keep putting more and more pressure on, you're gonna get like a kind of paste of the veggies and the meat come through. That might be a good thing for you or a bad thing, depends what you want. But I'm really happy with this. That's been resting for two hours. You're also gonna get resting juices. It's very normal to have a little bit of kind of foam coming to the top. Um, so a little quick way to be able to take that off is just take your pan to the side of the heat source. And if you come and have a look now, what that'll do is it'll boil up on one side and push the scum to one side. And just watch me here, I'll just go in and just touch the side, and you're left with the most fantastic, wonderful gravy. This now is ready for you to simmer. You can cool it down, heat it up. Uh, remember, this is gonna bring heat to the plate, whether it's veggies, you know, your carved meats uh, and roast potatoes. So there you go, the perfect gravy. The only thing to do now is just have a little try. Beautiful, beautiful gravy 
that will make people very, very happy. Until next time, take care. So good. Thank you.